Let's see how nuclear transport of proteins work. Well, some proteins are needed inside the nucleus uh, for various reasons. For example, the DNA polymerase, the RNA polymerase. All of them are enzymes, which means they are proteins. So they are needed inside the nucleus for replication, transcription, and so on. So how does these molecules or these proteins that are synthesized outside the nucleus, that is in the cytosol by the ribosomes, they are transported inside the nucleus. So let's see how that happens, how these proteins move in and out of the nucleus. And also there are some proteins which need to move out of the nucleus for some reason. So how does that happen? Let's uh, look into that. Now, let's say one protein moves inside of the nucleus. So this protein, it moves inside of the nucleus and the other one over here moves out of the nucleus. So this protein that moves inside of the nucleus would have a certain stretch of peptide that allows it to be recognized by a receptor which helps it to move inside the nucleus. And this signal or the stretch of peptide that is present is called the nuclear localization signal or NLS. So the NLS is recognized by a certain receptor which brings this protein inside the nucleus. And also for this other protein which needs to move out of the nucleus, there is certain protein that is present inside the nucleus or certain receptor that is present inside the nucleus which recognizes again a stretch of peptide or stretch of amino acids on this protein and helps it to transport out of the nucleus. So this signal sequence or this stretch of peptide that is recognized by the receptor it is called NES or nuclear export signal. So for the import or moving inside of the nucleus, the signal that is present on the protein is called NLS and the signal that is supposed to be recognized by an export protein or an export receptor is the signal called NES or nuclear export signal. Now let's see how a nuclear receptor looks like and for the nuclear import and for the nuclear our uh, nuclear export, the receptors, I mean, they look almost similar. So this is my receptor. This is my receptor. And uh, every nuclear receptor that is moving in and out of the nucleus would have two binding grooves. One is the binding groove that the protein or the cargo that needs to be transported, that needs to bind to the first groove. So this is the protein or the cargo binding groove, cargo binding groove. And the other one, the other one that is over here, this is another binding groove to which a very important molecule which is an absolute necessary for nuclear transport binds to. So this molecule is called the RAN and this groove is called the RAN binding groove. Now RAN is a protein which is a GTPase. So as the name suggests, GTPase is a protein that can shuffle between GTP and GDP. Basically this GTPase can bind to a GTP and on certain signal it can hydrolyze this GTP into a GDP. Now RAN is such kind of a GTPase and both RAN and protein that needs to be transported binds to this receptor which is actually helping this protein to get transported in and out of the nucleus. 
Now let's look into the import and the export separately because there are subtle differences between the import and the export of proteins. Okay, so first we'll start with the import. So let's say this is our protein. This is our protein that needs to be imported, that needs to go inside the nucleus. And we also have this receptor protein which binds to this protein. So this is having the groove which binds to this protein. And when this receptor protein is bringing a protein, bringing a cargo or a protein inside the nucleus, this receptor protein is called importin. So this receptor protein is called importin. So it is importing a certain protein inside the nucleus. So this is called importin. Now this importin binds to this cargo molecule and this importin it moves inside the nucleus. Okay, so this important moves inside the nucleus. And let's try it once more over here. And this is the protein. This is the cargo that needs to be transported. Now, when it moves inside the nucleus, RAN, which is in its RAN, which is in its GTP bound state, which is in its GTP bound state, it comes and binds to the RAN G GTP, I mean RAN binding group on the import receptor or the importin. So RAN over here is GTP bound form. Now what happens when RAN binds to this um, when RAN binds to this important receptor the conformation changes and this molecule over here this protein molecule that is transported it falls off and hence the transport is a success because that was the whole motive right we needed this molecule over here, this molecule over here, to move inside the nucleus. And it got bound to the important receptor, which brings it in inside the nucleus. And when RAN in its GTP bound form binds to the RAN binding groove, the protein or the cargo that was uh, bound to the important receptor, it falls off. And now the Importin is free of the protein cargo, but it is bound to the RAN GTP. So it is bound to the RAN GTP. So this is the case now. From this, this is the case now. Now, this important receptor, which is bound to the RAN GTP, would move out. would move out and let's draw it once more over here here is the RAN in its GTP bounds form now this receptor the function is done it has imported the cargo protein inside the nucleus now think for a second if this ran keeps on coming out of this uh, of of the nucleus then the concentration of ran inside the nucleus would deplete and like if the process moves on further then uh, the I mean, the, the transport of the protein would not function at all. Uh, if RAN is not binding to the receptor, if RAN is absent, it won't bind to the receptor and the protein that is bound to the receptor won't fall off. That is, the important con conformation won't change. So what happens, there is another 
there is another protein called the ran gap so what ran gap does it hydrolyzes this gtp into a gdp and pi so this ran gap this gap stands for gtpase activating protein so it is gtpase activating protein so what this ran gap does it activates this uh, ran which is a gtpase molecule so it is activating gtpase activating so it is activating the gtpase molecule in in this case which is uh, ran and this ran actually hydrolyzes this gtp into gdp and pi now once this ran is being uh, i mean this ran is bound to gdp now so now this ran is bound to gdp let's draw it once more over here so the ran is bound to gdp now this gdp bound form of ran cannot uh, i mean cannot stay by bound to the receptor so this molecule falls off so ran gdp falls off of the uh, importin receptor and now the importin is actually free now the importin is actually free to do another set of transport because nothing is bound to it now now what happens is like i said if the ran stays in the cytosol it will you know the concentration of ran inside the nucleus would deplete so what happens another factor called the ntf2 that is nuclear transport factor 2 this binds to ran and this brings ran inside the nucleus so the ran in its gdp bound form is inside the nucleus and the ntf2 that had brought it in ntf2 that had brought it inside the nucleus can eventually move out of the nucleus through the nuclear pore complex on its own it does not require any receptor so hence the concentration of ran inside the nucleus remains intact now for another set of reaction when this importin is again coming in what did i say the form of ran that binds to this importin was ran gtp but when it comes inside it is ran gdp so how does it again forms gtp from gdp so there is another molecule inside the nucleus like uh, ran gap so it is called ran gif so this gif stands for guanin exchange factor so let me write it down guanin guanin exchange factor so this guanin exchange factor this exchanges the gtp which is bound on ran to a gtp so ran gif it exchanges the gdp which is bound on ran into a gtp and we again have ran gtp which, which can bind to this importin and performs the function once more and the cycle continues so that's how importing of the protein from cytosol inside the nucleus works